Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this two-phased induction stove. It is a four-plate stove made into two modules and each is fed by a single phase 230 volt at up to 4 kilowatt of input power per section. We also have all the associated controls, the control panels and Actually, I think it would work if we hooked it all up, but uh, yeah, it's a complete mess with all the wires and absolutely no interest in rebuilding a induction stove without everything all around it. So let's just take it apart and scavenge the good parts and let's see what you can get from these yeah, modern kitchen electronics. This entire wire bunch here actually comes from not just the induction stove, but also a oven which you will most likely find in a complete unit, but you can also get these as just standalone table built-in models. Uh, the reason we can see this is the oven model is of course from the temperature sensor that we have here. No uh, markings really, but uh, for sure some kind of uh, PT100 or PT1000 sensor. The other end of the... Yeah, that had another sensor on it, but that's gone. And then we have some uh, over temperature switches just uh, mounted somewhere in the oven as well. So a lot of this uh, wire bundle here is not of much interest, except it's some nice silicone uh, cable. So that's worth keeping. Now the main controller here, um, as you can see, it's a very generic uh, controller. Some uh, housekeeping power supply can be built out for a much bigger unit. Uh, it's running on a um, ST7F325 microcontroller and we will actually find that distributed out over the complete unit. So if we move on to the um, user interface, which consists of a capacitively coupled button input panel. These just uh, sit under a glass plate. It's just uh, springs pressing up against with a small plate. We have the same microcontroller setting here. And for the display with some uh, additional input buttons, that is preferably for the oven. We have the same uh, microcontroller setting over here, a custom LED display, very large one. And uh, again, we have this three wire bus running around all the circuits. So um, I have seen uh, previous ones being uh, based on CAN bus. But I'm pretty sure that was two wire, so I'm not quite sure if this is uh, again two wire and then a ground. If we check out the connectors here, yeah, we have one pin going to the ground plane and the other one goes to two signal lines. So it's most likely two signal lines and a ground. The cooking plates itself. We can just get all these wires out of the way. They have this uh, insulating white foam to keep the heat from uh, heating up the induction coils itself, as these do only get hot from the yeah, proximity effect and also the high frequency current being switched through them. But the heat generated inside the pan, we are not interested in, in that getting down into the coil again. Then we have these uh, temperature sensors sitting up here. These uh, plates are normally just yeah, click-in modules. And as we can see when we open this up, that everything is built up in modules for, yeah, you can just expand this to a bigger, bigger power models, bigger plates, smaller plates. It's just one generic inverter. So, here we have it. Two identical units. If I were to give my best guess, we have input coming in down here, single phase and neutral, filtering, input uh, relay, very uh, interesting inductor we have here, but again we have we have some inductors. We have 
we have the light gray or light blue or very dark light blue capacitors up here that is the dc bulk capacitance 400 volt dc for microfarads and then down here we have the resonant capacitors these are rated 0 0.68 microfarad at 800 volt and also 50 kilohertz very nice resonant capacitors straight ready up to use for a tesla coil or induction heater yeah well this is a induction heater so why not rebuild it for something similar as well now uh, i really love the board uh, mark up here um, so i'll just get some uh, close-up pictures and we'll explain that or go through that it's named the cheetah slash tiger which is uh, kind of um, interesting that you mix up two different animals in the product name but um Built up as what seems like a full, full bridge um, rectifier at the input. We have only a half bridge for each output as well. But the full bridge here is a D25 XB60, so 25 amps at 600 volts. And the large switches here are GT60J323. So most likely something like 60 amp, 1200 volts. What I find really peculiar about this board is how all the jumpers are actually marked. You have full text descriptions on all these, like alarm mode, a ground, alarm, a ground, plus five volt, I mains, V input, UIRX, UA, UA, UITX. So we have at least two pins here for um, the user interface and also safety release very interesting i have never seen jumpers marked with full text on a pcb before so if we go back to one of the uh, coils here you can see this is also a good source for some nice lit wire just didn't remove this foam i got no idea how hazardous that is but Let's just dispose of that. And you have a good length of um, lit wire here. And it's not like it's fastened too good anyway. So you can usually just pull it off the, um, the plate it's sitting on by just pulling one end and then just gently pull it off. It's just glued in place so of course, it's not the cleanest of wire to reuse and it has a lot of uh, yeah, this, again, heat shielded material sitting on it. But for a do-it-yourself transformer, this is absolutely free of charts when finding a thrown out induction stove. With a good ferrite core from something else, you can easily rebuild this into a, yeah, I'd say a good 8-10 kilowatt induction heater or a good sized Tesla coil can probably easily with this setup make something that throws out one meter of sparks or something in that range. No problem. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. We did not go so much into the technical details because this is really a straightforward inverter with a power input section, two half bridges for each their, each their coil, a resonant LC circuit for the induction coil and some smaller capacitance here. And even the small DC bus capacitance suggests that this works in quasi-resonant mode, as a lot of induction heaters really do, because it's dirt cheap to make them that way. So, until next time, see ya.